This meeting is being recorded. Well, uh, welcome all again. It is my pleasure to welcome our keynote speaker today, Helen Cregan Walsh, uh, who is uh, no stranger to a lot of you in the room today. Um, maybe what uh, is new to you, because many of you have known her in the role that she held before, and now she's expanded that experience, expanded her knowledge. And um, we now know Helen as a, a thinking into results consultant. So she's a certified thinking into results consultant uh, under the Procter and Gamble, uh, Procter Gallagher Institute, I should say. Yeah, different company altogether. <laughs> and she's also a qualified financial advisor. So making her knowledge and what she talks about so secure and um, uh, weighted with, with what she knows. Um, she believes that you deserve to understand and and be and have the best uh, for yourself, have the most abundant life. And as a business and mindset a mentor, she can help you achieve that faster and guarantee success. And everybody likes to know that they can have success at the end of that. Um, how does she do it? Well, she's done it because she's she's had the same education. She's had the same guidance and mentoring um, before her and she's, the proof in the pudding, so to speak. And today she's going to help us understand um, how we can ensure that our last quarter of 2022 um, can end in success. I don't know about you, but I am fed up. I'm absolutely fed up of hearing this negative um, press, what, we're, what our governments are sharing with us, all of these things that are coming towards. We understand that they're going to happen, but are we in control of it? No we have to focus on what we're in control of. How can we change? How can we work on what we know? So without further ado, I am actually gonna hand this over now to Helen Kriegel-Malch as she talks us through finishing Q4 2022 strong. Um, you can uh, share your screen there, uh, Helen. Thank you so much, Siobhan. And thank you so much for that introduction. I'm. Uh, always feel so welcome, um, so thank you. And I only have three screens up <coughs> because I am sharing my screen. Nothing fancy, so you can see that there, right? Welcome yeah, to Q4 perfect. Finish Strong. Okay, now before, I'm just also gonna time this, Siobhan, because I know you said 15 minutes, so I've just set a clock, right? Just to kind of keep me uh, in check. Um, because what you just said there uh, about um, outside circumstances, I'm going to shift for one second before I get into the presentation. Like I know I'm, I'm very conscious of, of always kind of delivering what the remit was. And a couple of things that was on uh, the description of me speaking today was really um, why do we consistently produce the results we do? Um, why do we achieve the same results year after year? What's keeping us stuck and how we can achieve permanent results? and how we can do this in a fun, joyful, easy way. Um, I'm gonna share an article with everyone who's on the call called um, The De Decision, right? I'm making a decision, but I just wanted to read this to you here uh, about what, what, what Siobhan was alluding to, and I think it's so important. There's a humanistic psychologist called Dr. Abraham Maslow, and he devoted his life to studying self-actualized people. And he stated very clearly that we should follow our inner guide and not be swayed by the opinion of others or outside circumstances. And Maslow's research showed that the decision makers in life had a number of things in common. And most importantly, they did, they did work they felt was worthwhile and important, and they found work a pleasure, and there was little distinction between work and play. And when you're thinking or listening to the news, of which I don't do really that much anymore, unless it's absolutely something relevant to me, just keep that in mind. You control your world from the inside out. Um, and when you're looking now at finishing Q4 strong, I want you to, if, if you are controlling from the inside out, what if this was a new beginning? Just like all the young people, um, older people who might be adult education are going back, putting the backpacks on. What if you put on a brand new backpack and you said, I'm ready, you know, sharpened your pencils and I'm ready for whatever that might be. I'm ready to finish it with a greater income. I'm ready to finish it with greater ease and flow and joy and just, what if it was a new beginning? So let's just see it as a new beginning because imagine that and imagine that going into January, 
that flow that you already have done because you've done done that homework, if you will. So um, next slide, which we all hope you about. So do you know how many people do feel this, right? Feel stuck, not knowing how to break out. They're working harder, they're earning less. Um, and they're not knowing how to get off this hamster wheel. I was one of these, right? And for years in financial services and running my own women's fitness business, I just felt I had to work harder and harder. And I've also seen in financial services, you know, people living based on their budget, uh, constricted by their income uh, or their relationship to money, you know? Um, and I know we've got people who look at this as, a, as, as from a from a money point of view, but really, if you focus 95% on your mindset and how you see things, that, that strategy will link right into it because you're focused on it and you take inspired action. So I've always said to everybody, you have more than enough. And really when I've created how to create wealth, I was so conscious of, are people gonna think I'm talking just about money? But I think when you feel wealthy and you feel prosperity, it doesn't matter what's in the bank account. You have this inner confidence, um, that you have the money that you need when you need it, and you have time and, 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 and freedom even with your health. Albert Einstein, as we all know this, this saying, you know, it's doing the same thing over and over again and expecting uh, different results. And that's where we get stuck, right? And, 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 and I'm going to show you three, three things that I believe we get stuck. One is revisit your goals. And some of these are going to be so simple and obvious. You might come off the call and go, did she tell me anything new? But but when it's simple and when it's repeated often, that's when you'll take action. So when I say revisit your goals, you know, are they worthy for you? You know, do you feel excited about them? You know, um, and a goal is a successive progression of a worthy ideal. The worthy ideal might be stepping into your purpose. The worthy ideal might be helping, you know, 10 new clients on their marketing plans. The worthy ideal might be getting the expo back going maybe and Catherine and I were chatting about this earlier the worthy ideal might be you know how do I get and cut another 10 hours off my work and still have the same amount of clients because you know I'm, I'm so knowledgeable or how do I help you know people that want to come into this business you know something that really gets you excited does it get you excited is it written down do they belong to you that's a big thing do they belong to you or are you just doing it because somebody told you to do it and what do you really really want so revisit them and get excited. And I always talk, I talk about this quite a lot in my program, but also with clients, you know, most people sit in this A and B, you know what I mean? Like if you already know how to earn a certain amount of money or you already know what you do, it doesn't really inspire you and you won't really take action. So maybe a C type goal could be, you know, I really want to get that holiday in in January, February, or I really want to you know, buy an electric scooter or really whatever it might be but if you attach it to something that you really want you'll be inspired to take more action so look at your goals now you've done that now you're really inspired and you're excited then we and this is like i mean you've probably seen this so many times coming out of different meetings people come out of meetings and they go yeah i'm gonna do it then everybody goes back and does what they normally do so identifying your knowing doing gap so if you want to increase your sales by 20 percent and you're still talking to the same amount of people or even less or doing all the admin tasks because you don't really want to talk to 10 more people and it's uncomfortable. You know, you have to look at what am I doing? And, and if I, I think a good example of this was like, if I, if I want to set, do a new TikTok video or I want to get out on social media and I go into TikTok and I spend 25 minutes looking or an hour looking at everybody else's activity and I've done nothing. Well, that's not very productive. So look at your knowing doing it. What do, what do I know I need to be doing? And what am I actually doing? Right? And just, just identify that and say, okay, how do I do that better? You know, I mean, one of my goals is, you know, I want to work four to five hours a day. That's it, right? And still earn maybe a multiple of what I'm earning. But that means I have to be very efficient when I'm doing it. It doesn't mean I'm gonna, you know, live my life um, without having fun, I'm going to be very efficient to do it. And then I have the extra time for, for the, the things that I enjoy most. I skipped ahead, but this is an interesting, um, is anyone on here now know what a paradigm is? Would anybody like to tell me if they know what a paradigm is? Anyone? No, I've been told and I've forgotten, sorry. <laughs> Parad paradigm sits deep in your subconscious and it's a multitude of habits, right? 
you could look at your paradigm as the language we speak. We all, we all well, we don't, because Claudia, the first language might not be English, but all our first languages might be English because that's a paradigm, it's a multitude of habits. That's what we learned was the language. What food we like is a paradigm, right? And so all of these things are things that we have inherited, probably up to the age of five, and, and that we have. So there are a multitude of habits. However, some of them might not serve us in where we want to go in business and personally. So if you spend, and I'll, I'll give you a, an ex, I'll give you two examples, one personally and, and one professionally. Um, if, but just Bob Proctor is one of my mentors uh, in, in the Thinking to Results program. You know, if you want to improve the quality of your life, start allocating a portion of each day to changing your paradigm, changing those multitude of habits that don't serve you, those non-productive activities, the ones that are just not working. And the two examples I give is um, going back to wanting to reach a certain amount of clients um, and going out networking and doing all of that, but, but then doing the follow-up calls, making the calls, speaking to the people, getting uncomfortable. You know, it was, it's much more comfortable maybe writing a blog post or doing some admin rather than maybe reaching out to call people, right? And so that was something I shifted. I said, okay, I'm going to talk to, you know, double the amount of people I speak to, or I'm going to reach out to people so that I can get to where I need to get to. And I did by allocating, you know, I allocated, I didn't want to work evenings. I want to work during the day. So I allocated say Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday from pretty much could have been 10 to four or five to meet clients. And when I started doing that, it was really uncomfortable because I because people would say, inevitably, they'd say, can I meet you on a, a Monday night at six o'clock? But that wasn't in my diary, right? That that was, I don't know, taking Pierce to football training, whatever was there. So I allocated all my, my, my this was the strategy, but the mindset was I can work during this time, right? So um, I said, well, like, I can't do that, but I could do this time on Tuesday, this time on Wednesday. And, and it just started shifting and people started moving into that. Then, okay, no problem, we can do that. Um, and obviously there's always exceptions, but if you want to get into Google, what working from the inside out and, and, and creating the life you want, you shift that paradigm. And the other one, which you all might be a, a bit aware of is even, even starting this business was shifting a paradigm because I was so comfortable in financial services and I love the clients I have, but there was a deep down wanting feeling that if I could change so much, why wouldn't I want to share and help other people change change it? And I'm still working on shifting that paradigm because the paradigm's not as comfortable as I want. It's it's a it's a big one. But it's another one which you go, well Helen, this is the easy one. But um my health goal, the shift, the paradigm was, you know, I do an exercise for an hour a day. Every day I get up, whatever time it is, half five, six, it's it, the time doesn't matter, I get up and I walk for an hour. And I spoke to someone who owns a really successful interior design business. And she was saying to me, oh, I see all your posts, you're walking every day. I wish I had time. That was me. I wish I had time, you know? So when you make the time, other, other things will, will come in. So shift that paradigm. So I'm, I'm conscious that I have four odd minutes. Let's take you're some action. Fine, Helen. I'm okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. So let's look at taking some action. So when we're talking about shifting that paradigm, I want you to all see this as something that's joyful and fun. Again, if you don't do this, I would strong, this can change everything. Um, when I started doing this, I remember sitting down. So when I say gratitude daily practice, write down five things that you're grateful right now. Right now, I'm grateful. I actually used to hate my car. I'm actually grateful that my car runs. I'm grateful as a sunroof. I'm grateful that it takes me everywhere I want because when I was ungrateful, I got stuck on the motorway and had to pay four grand for it. Hmm. So I write down what I'm grateful for, five things I'm grateful for right now. And then I write down five things that I'm grateful for in the future, but I write them in the present tense. So I'm grateful that we're living in this new beautiful home um, and we're by the sea and I can hear the ocean and sometimes I put the, the ocean music on at nighttime. Write down what you're grateful for. Gratitude shifts everything, everything. Um, and, then, and, 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 and then write out 50 wants, you know, and those wants could be, as I said, um, anything. Did you and say guys, 50? 50, yes, five, five zero. Oh, five <laughs> zero, yes, think big. It's, hard, it's a hard, it's, a, it's not a hard task. It's as hard as you make it, but 50. And you'd be surprised. Um, the ones that I've written down, 
like, I mean, it could be, I want to play tennis once a week. Um, I want to um, go to the theater because I always wanted to go to the theater more. I want to, so there, <laughs> you're probably going to say this is a business call and it's about networking. But the reality is, is that why am I building my business? Like if, if we're all about money circulating and, and being like water flowing, then then you want to be able like if you don't know why you want want it or you want to why you want to spend it, well, you're not going to be very inspired to make more of it, right? So write down those things you want. Um, you know, a, again, I, I probably haven't shared all of these, but like I wanted to go to a villa for my my well a very big birthday three years ago, <laughs> and and I imagined it in my mind. And we went, and I remember sitting in the in the villa, and, and oh, I just lost my ear earbud. I remember sitting in the villa, and I was like, this was in my imagination before it came here. So look at now, more practical stuff. Six habits that you want to change, right? And then choose two that you'll work on straight away, and go to work. Only choose one or two. You know, it could be that you want to work a certain amount of hours and and do something personally, and and just watch those results and watch you start moving to the goal because we're we're this is science and we're built we are built on the best way to say it is frequencies so the more you can get yourself to a very place where you're responding all the time and that that frequency you that's the first law of the universe is is is, is that of vibration so once you when i mean by vibration is mood feeling so if you're always operating on this high one you will be attracting and the reason you get stuck is <laughs> you're doing the same things over and over again and you're getting the same results. So if you're happy with those results, well, then you go, okay, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm okay. But if you can change just very small ones, you can incrementally take a huge uh, leap of results. And think abundance. That's what I mean by this. Think that, you know, there, no matter what the news says, no matter what is out there, there is an abundance, like the trees, like the water, and like nature. I hope you will connect with me. I have um, a collective brilliance uh it's like a Facebook page, but I also have a group called How to Create Wealth. And I'll be, I have been very quiet in it, but I will be uh, operating more of it there and you can get tips and, and, and just maybe inspiring things. I'm going to be doing an online webinar, um, How to Think and Grow Rich. It will be with Bob. It's something that he worked on before he passed. And it'll be 12 noon uh, next Friday. So if you can join for an hour, I'd love to see you there. Um, and I will send anyone this wonderful This Is an Article, which I would encourage you strongly uh, to um, have a read of and I'll leave you with this decide what you want and decide what you're prepared to give up to get it and that means what kind of non-productive activities can you do and then you're set your mind on it and get on with the work so thank you very much for listening and again thank you so much Siobhan for having me today Helen well done I like that last sentence that you finished with what are we prepared to give up in order to achieve it? And I think that's the crux of our habits, giving up those habits that don't serve us well. Um, and in making the shift, we have to take responsibility. Um, I'm going to open it up to the room um, for questions. So please raise your hand if you'd like to ask Helen any questions. Um, I'll start with one myself because I do have one. Jen and Jen had a question too, I think. Okay, Jen, you fire ahead first. Well, I had more of a comment that I wanted to say thank you for the reminders because I think it's very easy to, first of all, uh, poo poo the importance of mindset. And uh, I think it's also really easy to get into comfort zones, two areas that Honestly, this week, one of them really hit me. Like I really have gotten too comfortable in my physical health and why can't I be 52 and a person who's in shape, right? But it's going to take a lot of discomfort for me to get there. And the other thing is, I know I really need to be reaching out to people to get on their podcasts, but I have to ask and I have to, you know, not be, wait for the invitation, but be in, but invite myself or ask to be, and that's really uncomfortable for me, but I know those two things would make a huge shift in every area of my life. So thank you for the reminder. And, and can I just say one thing to you, Jen, you're very welcome. One thing I'd say to you is the more you think it's uncomfortable, 
the less you'll want to do it. So mm-hmm. in your mind, see it as, gosh, I'd really love to go on that podcast because mm-hmm. it would be so much fun and it's so wonderful. I and like just kind that. of say that in your mind. And, and even on the, um, uh, on the health, right? Because I'm 53, like we're very similar. Like I remember being on a call and someone was like, oh my God, I just turned 50. Can I talk to somebody about how sick I feel? And I was like, oh my God, I'm three years older than her and I feel amazing. So again, <laughs> don't see it as hard work right because that's and I've been that soldier so I just go god it'd be really just with if Siobhan said at the beginning curiosity how about just curiosity and fun what would it be like to be the healthiest 52 year old that I could possibly be what would it be like would it be fun? I think the um mm. the most helpful thing that you the, the takeaway for me is uh focus on the result Mm. versus the process and I tend to be such a process focused person so if I can just kind of you know, imagine skipping through all of those little steps and then seeing myself on the other end, that might be more productive for me. And thank you for that, because that reminds me to say that's what I work on, the end result. Cheers. Love it. Thank you, Jen. Uh, Annabelle, you have a question. Thank you, Siobhan. So um, I, my question is on paradigms. Like, what would be um, the easiest way to change a paradigm? Because in my own understanding, a paradigm is something um, either you've grown up to, it's something you have engraved in your mind uh, concerning a specific issue. It could be around money or around relationships or around anything. So what's the easiest way to shift a paradigm? Like to move from maybe thinking that, May, I, I can't make this amount of money or to think, okay, like I have a friend who um, he, she separated from the, the father of her kids and she says she doesn't want to marry anymore. What's the best way to help her get away from that? Yeah, that's a great question. They're all, I mean, and, and Jen's comments was great questions as well. Um, Annabelle, Bob said this, and it was really good. So when Sandy Gallagher uh, joined the, the company with Bob, I think uh, she was a corporate lawyer, right? Working in a firm and she was still, in the, and I think this is supposed to be subconsciously meant for me, but she was still always at the law firm working and working. And he, he, he was like, hey, what are you doing? You're supposed to be over here developing this thing Peter Zopro. And she's like, I'm working on my paradigm, my old paradigm. He's like, no, stop working on your old paradigm and start working on your new one. So in that case, if you take your friend who um, who's gone through a separation and a divorce, so instead of stop thinking all the time, I don't want to get married, I don't want to get married, you just to say, I'm really open to receiving love when it's right and when I'm ready. And focusing, get, get excited about something that is, the best way to say it is, Find something that you get that you that you that you spend your energy on that you that you care more about than this, you know. So when you're shifting a paradigm, like the simplest ones are, you know, if your habit is to eat unhealthy, you know what I mean. So and that's you know you shift that to I eat healthy. So it, it, the the idea is you're 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 replacing it, and the way you replace it, there's a few different ways. Some the one of the and it's usually a negative way is. Um, is um, emotional impact, right? So you'll see someone shift something like that, like they have a heart attack or they, they get, they have something so bad that they just shift straight away, right? Or auto suggestion, meaning you say the same thing, even if you don't believe it, you, you, you know, I'm so, I'm, I'm open to receive, I'm open to receive all the business that's coming my way, I'm open to, and you just, you just keep saying it, but then you let it go and you just believe that it's going to happen and you let it, and you just let it go. I hope that was communicated okay to you, Annabelle. There's, it is um, very much around what we say to ourselves. So what you're saying in terms of a paradigm, the language we use to talk to ourselves, what we say, and if we remain in a negative or we remain in a space that's not serving us well, we we will always stay there. So unless we ship that, um, an example I give uh, yesterday I went to a live networking event and I you know I'm an extrovert and a lot of you know me from going to live events or being at live events with me before COVID know that I'm no shrinking violet and I'm already I'm happy to be in front of the room COVID kind of exercised or gave my introvert side a lot more airtime or no airtime. And I, I kind of came into myself. And one of the things I learned is when I go to these, my business is virtual. I'm happy to keep it virtual. I'm all right with that. But I do need 
um, I realized yesterday in order to shift my mindset, which sometimes can be a little, it can get negative when I'm not in a room of, of other voices mm -hmm. and hearing and experiencing, I can stay in that. So to shift my paradigm is to get out of my comfort zone. I don't know if I've explained that correctly. And um, that's, oh, but you realized it. See, the first thing to do is realize it. So you, mm -hmm. you, you, re, what you just said is you, you, the, the, the greater our awareness. So the more we come aware, gosh, I need to shift my, like, if you weren't aware of that, you wouldn't know what to shift. So the yeah. first is to become aware. Yeah. And then as you said, then, then, yeah, you, you know, what are your assumptions? Very, that's, I think that was communicated super well. Sure. Thank you, Helen. Do we have any other questions for Helen? Oh, thanks. Thank nope. you very much again. Thanks. Oh, very good. I'm going to stop recording now. So.